So I've had the PS5 and the Series X for a while now, but I've had the PS5 longer. In fact, I've had it since its launch in 2020. As for the Series X, I've only had it for about five months now since the release of the Halo Series Limited Edition. Here's the thing though, I've never actually owned an Xbox console before, at least not until now. The Series X is my first venture into the world of Microsoft console gaming. I'm essentially what you would call a long-term PlayStation user. I've owned every single PlayStation since the first one, the PS1. Now, trust me, I don't care for console wars. I actually think it's dumb to fight over the console someone chooses to play. Some make the choice based on what the majority of their friends go for. Others make the choice based on console exclusives. What I'm saying really is there's no point in arguing over what console is the best. What's going on YouTube? It's Tommy here and welcome to another video. Throughout this video, I'll be comparing different features of both consoles from my perspective, which is that of a long-term PlayStation user. First off, let's look at the PS5's body. It's got a slim and a tall design that most likely resembles an internet router or even a tall skyscraper building. It can be mounted vertically or horizontally using the stand provided with it, but I prefer to keep mine in a vertical position to save space, you know, mostly. The faceplates are also customizable and very easy to switch out. The Series X, on the other hand, is much thicker with inspiration that seems to have come from the design of a fridge. You can't take the faceplates off the Series X, but, you know, skins can be used to change the appearance of the console. You can also mount the Series X vertically or horizontally, and I prefer to keep this upright as well. This one's not a deal breaker on choice of console for me, but I still love the ability to change faceplates on the PS5. We use controllers to interact with games, so it's extremely important for them to be very immersive and comfortable to hold. The PS5's DualSense and Xbox wireless controllers are both very functional with their pros and cons. They both have different button layouts, but the buttons all do pretty much the same things. I love that the Xbox controller uses a replaceable battery, which is great for using the controllers long term and saving some money. On the other hand, if the battery on the DualSense dies, you'll have to replace the whole unit. If it came down to the choice of one controller, there's only one choice for me, and that's the PS5's DualSense. It's still my favorite of any of the controls I've ever used in my past. I'm also a huge fan of features like haptic feedback and adaptive triggers, which create that feeling like you're part of the game itself. I'm definitely a little biased here, but I also prefer the button layouts on you know, the PS5's controller since I'm already used to it. Okay, so both systems come with onboard storage of one terabyte, which I don't think is anywhere near enough for most hardcore gamers. And to be honest with you guys, you don't even get all that one terabyte. The software on both systems take up some of that storage, but at least you're left with a little bit more on the Xbox than you are on the PS5. If you're a casual gamer, you'd probably be fine with just that. If not, you'll need to expand the storage by using external hard drives or solid state drives. Both systems allow you to back up any of your games to external drives. On the PS5 though, you can only play PS4 games directly from external storage devices. And on the Series X, you can only play backward compatible Xbox 360 games, you know, stuff like that. Not ones designed for Series X or Series S systems. In order to store and play PS5 games in additional storage, you'll have to purchase an NVMe solid state drive with the minimum requirements and install it into a specific specific slot inside the console. With the Series X, you'll have to invest in a storage expansion card designed specifically for the Xbox. There are also NVMe SSDs. These are very small in size and work using, you know, the Xbox Velocity architecture. The installation process of one of these cards is as easy as plugging it into the back slot of the console, just like you would a flash drive. The Series X has a better storage expansion system than the PS5 in my opinion. I haven't needed to upgrade storage on the Xbox yet. But I know how seamless it's going to be, and you know, this is how it should be on the PS5, but it's not how it is. The user interface for both systems is very clean and intuitive. They both also feature very fast loading times for games. PS5 has a very organized layout for games and media apps, and I find that it's easy to navigate through the menu to find whatever you're looking for. Quickly jumping into a game you've been playing is so easy, and switching between games is seamless. These all apply to the Series X as well, so choosing one of these consoles based on the UI or load time would have to be based on preference entirely because they both excel greatly. I personally prefer the PS5's user interface over the Series X. It just looks the best to me. Gameplay graphics is a huge factor for any console, especially in 2022. 4K, HDR, ray tracing, and high frame rate gameplay has now become the norm. Most games now come with a fidelity and a performance mode. Essentially, uh, you know, a high graphics versus a high frame rate mode. And some with the ability to push the frame rate of gameplay even further. Granted though, you'll need a high quality TV to maximize the potential of both consoles. And I'm talking about a TV with HDMI 2.1 inputs. But rest assured, both consoles are at the top of their game when it comes down to gameplay graphics. But so far, we've only seen both consoles barely push 4K at 120 frame rates per second. To be honest, that's a lot of power for the price of each system. 
You'd have to be extremely nitpicky to choose one over the other based on gameplay graphics. I personally have no preference. They both look great to me. Without games to play on either console, there's really no point in getting any. There's tons of games to choose from on both consoles. A lot of games are multi-platform as well, which means they can be played on both consoles. If you don't care for any specific game at all, then it doesn't matter which console you go for. But for me, I'm definitely leaning towards the PlayStation side for its exclusives. PlayStation exclusives are so well designed and you see it in the little details within games like Horizon Forbidden West, Spider-Man, Ratchet and Clank, and others. In short, the quality of PlayStation exclusives is top of the line and I'll definitely pick up a PS5 over a Series X for this singular reason. Xbox definitely has some good exclusives of its own like Forza and Halo, but they're not enough to pull me towards a Series X. You can also play them all on a PC if you have one, so they don't really feel like exclusives to me. Something you've got to really appreciate about owning a Series X is Game Pass. It's a monthly subscription service that comes in different tiers for access to a library of games and sometimes access to Xbox exclusives on release day. There has been, you know, strong debate about how PlayStation has nothing similar for the longest time. Recently, PlayStation announced the remodeling of their PS Plus subscription service. They're moving towards, you know, a tiered system as well, but they seem to be following a different strategy. With PlayStation's new subscription service, you're never going to gain access to day one releases of the exclusives. Instead, you gain access to lots of games from older generation consoles like the PS1, PS2, PS3, and the Vita, as well as game trials for, you know, some new games before you commit to buying. Between the two subscription models, I honestly don't care too much for either of them. I personally don't find a lot of great games that I like to play in Game Pass's library. I do like the fact that with Game Pass Ultimate, which is the highest tier, I can play PC games as well. This is actually what sold me on Game Pass. I've had a PlayStation since the first one, so I see no incentive in paying for a library of old games, which I've probably played already or don't want to play at all. I think the PlayStation tiered system could actually be great for people who are new to the PlayStation system. I can't really say one is better than the other just yet because the PlayStation's new system hasn't gone live yet, so I haven't experienced it. Maybe it'll be better than expected or it could just be another flop just like PS Now. There's going to be over 700 games on there, so I don't know, we'll have to see. I could go on and on about both consoles on how one is better than the other in one way or another, but it all comes down to what works for each person. If you can get both, I definitely recommend you know doing that to get the best of both worlds. Or you could get a PC and a PS5 and you're truly set up for anything the gaming world throws at you. If you can afford to get one or just want a single gaming system, then I'd say choose based on your situation. Situations like what your close friends use the most or what exclusives you want to play. Comment down below which of these consoles you own or would prefer. As for me, if I had to pick one of these consoles, I'd go with the PS5. The DualSense controller and PlayStation exclusives are strong enough arguments for me to keep a PlayStation around. I found myself spending more time on the PS5 than the Xbox so far, but that could also be because I use my PC to game sometimes, which definitely takes away from the time I play on the Xbox, since I can play all the same games on the Xbox on PC as well. If you made it this far, you should consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like below to show that you enjoyed the video as well. Thanks for watching. It's Tommy with Midas Tech, and I'm out.